Hello, my name is Eric Allman, and the following presentation will cover stress corrosion cracking in fire sprinkler systems. I will begin by discussing my motivation for selecting this topic, some of the specific mechanisms for, of crack propagation, some of the influencing factors, testing procedures, and some ways that we can prevent stress corrosion cracking from occurring. My main motivation for selecting this topic is that I have experience in fire sprinkler design. Also, if a pipe fails, costly damage can occur. And beyond that, it's a life safety hazard because the system will be down for a period of time and the building will be without fire protection. Oftentimes, all forms of environmentally assisted cracking get summed into one phrase called stress corrosion cracking. However, stress corrosion cracking is a specific mechanism of crack propagation of em environmentally induced cracking. Stress corrosion cracking involves an anodic reaction which drives the crack propagation. Whereas hydrogen induced cracking, also known as hydrogen embrittlement, involves a cathodic reaction which drives the crack propagation. As I said before, stress corrosion cracking involves an anodic corrosion process, which allows the tip to be consumed by the corrosion reaction. It's crucial that the crack tip be consumed more rapidly than the wall of the crack. This allows new material to be exposed at the crack tip and the crack to propagate. Stress corrosion cracking can be categorized into three different stages. In stage one, the crack growth rate is just limited by the stress intensity factor. During stage two, it's only limited by the corrosion rate. As you can see, the growth rate stays steady where the stress intensity factor increases until it reaches the point of stage three where catastrophic failure occurs because the fracture toughness of the material has been exceeded. Hydrogen embrittlement, while still under the category of environmentally assisted cracking, differs from stress corrosion cracking, where a cathodic corrosion reaction drives the crack propagation. Hydrogen diffuses into the interstitial and grain boundaries of steel preceding the crack tip. This hydrogen reduces the cohesive bond strength between the metal atoms and allows the crack to propagate through a weaker material. For hydrogen embrittlement, the crack propagation rate is dependent upon the temperature. As the temperature increases, the diffusion rate also increases. You can see from the graph on the top right how the increasing temperature affects the crack growth rate. On the bottom right, you can see as the temperature increases, the critical stress intensity factor also increases. Thus, a higher stress intensity factor is required at greater temperatures for the crack to propagate. There are a few factors which influence environmentally assisted cracking in fire sprinkler pipelines. First is the corrosive environment. Every specific material has a relative corrosive environment in which environmentally assisted cracking, or more specifically, stress corrosion cracking, will occur. Some other influencing factors are the residual stresses which exist in pipes, which could be caused from the manufacturing process or how they're utilized in the field. Also, service stress, such as internal pressures of the pipe, play a role as well. Here's an example of, of a couple of clusters of stress corrosion cracks. This image utilizes magnetic particle inspection for clarity of the image. It's very difficult to accurately predict the stress concentration factor 
at which stress corrosion cracking will occur. However, typical fracture mechanics tests are implemented, except the specimen will be placed in that corrosive environment. Once this critical value is determined, a critical crack length can then be determined as well, and pipes with larger defects than that can be discarded. There are multiple ways that environmentally assisted cracking in fire sprinkler systems can be eliminated. One is to reduce the stresses, and that can be done a number of ways. First off, through proper design. Secondly, annealing or heat treating the pipe. Third, by introducing a compressive stress along the surface of the pipe through shot peening. Another option would be to eliminate the corrosive environment, which can be done through proper design and proper maintenance. Finally, you can change from the susceptible material altogether and use a galvanized steel pipe instead of a traditional black steel pipe. In conclusion, the cracks caused by environmentally assisted cracking will not propagate with the applied or the residual stress alone because they fall below the fracture toughness of the material. It's the synergistic effect of the corrosive environment and the stresses which allow the crack to propagate. The crack growth rate for stress corrosion cracking is simply dependent upon the chemistry of the corrosion process and that is which limits it. Whereas for hydrogen embrittlement, the crack growth rate is dependent upon the diffusion rate, uh, which is dependent upon the temperature. The conditions necessary for stress corrosion cracking to occur can be summed up in the Venn diagram below. I hope you now understand some of the basic elements of stress corrosion cracking in fire sprinkler systems.